Luke chapter 24, we'll begin reading verse number 13. The Bible says, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. That's six and a half miles, or about six and a half miles. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. Now this is right after the resurrection of the Lord. All right. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to have believed all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh into the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake and gave to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for the word of God, the scriptures that testify of thee. God, we're thankful that you entrusted us with them. God, we've enjoyed the good singing tonight. We enjoyed the good congregational singing and the special singing. Lord, our hearts were blessed. Lord, we enjoyed just being with your people, being in your house, and being able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, Father, I pray for those that are working with the teens on the other side, that, God, you'd bless their efforts. And, God, I pray that, Lord, you would certainly help them and insulate them, put hedges about them. Because now, Lord, many of them are back in school, and, God, they're facing uh, uh, pressure, and they're facing uh, wickedness and things in this world. And, God, I pray that, Lord, you'd help them to be a light uh, under their... Uh, uh, communities in the school. God, I certainly do pray that you'd help us tonight from the scriptures. Uh, I pray you'd bless us to set in heavenly places. Uh, and I pray that you'd meet every need of every heart. I pray for those that may have been in our midst this morning, lost without the Lord. I pray to that even where they are tonight, that Lord, you'd continue to speak to their hearts, that we might see them get born again. Now, Father, I pray for those that are sick. I pray for little Samantha. You'd touch her. I pray for Brother Clint's uh, 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 Aunt Nancy. You'd help her there in the hospital. And God, we certainly do pray for Miss Rhonda. Brother Ron, as they had to leave out because she got sick, I pray you'd touch her and help her. For the next few minutes, Lord, uh, bless as only you can. 
meet with us and have your will and way. Well, thank you for it, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things as a way of introduction. I want you to look again at verse 15. The Bible says this, And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Can I say that they were with the person of Christ, but they did not recognize the presence of Christ? Now many times that Jesus will show up in our service, uh, and there are folks that well, they're excited, and there are folks that they feel his presence, and they get in on the service, but there are others just sitting by thinking, well, what's, what's the big deal? This crowd was with the person of Jesus Christ, but they didn't recognize his presence. Can I say how, how sad for Jesus to walk by and folks not recognize his presence? Can I say something else? They had a perception of who Christ was, uh, um, but were not positioned in him. Look at verse 21. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. Beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Again, they had a perception of who he was, but they were not positioned in him. They're still looking for Christ the Redeemer to redeem Israel from Rome. They're looking for the King of Glory to come, what he is going to do at his second coming. Uh, and when Jesus rebukes them in his preaching, uh, he lets them know, ought Christ not to have suffered these things? Uh, if you knew the prophets, uh, you should have understood. Uh, Isaiah said he'd be born of a virgin. Uh, Isaiah let us know that he would uh, have his beard plucked from his face, uh, that the Lord would lay on him the iniquity of us all. Uh, hey, uh, 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 Malachi, uh, Micah, uh, let us know he'd be born in Bethlehem. Uh, and throughout the prophets, uh, there were some uh, uh, 30 specific uh, uh, prophecies that he fulfilled, uh, proving he was Christ. Uh, but yet, they was looking for the king. They weren't looking for the Savior. So again, they had a perception of who he was, but they weren't positioned in him. You know, in our neighborhoods, it's hard to find anybody that doesn't believe in God. You'll find people that say, well, I go to church here, or I go to church there. They have a perception of Christ. They understand why we celebrate Christmas. They understand why we celebrate Easter. They just don't know Him. Hmm. Can I say, these Emmaus disciples also heard the preaching of Jesus, yet were not persuaded He was Christ. Yet, verse 25, he said unto them, O fools, slow of, uh, of heart, to believe all the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Can you imagine that message? Jesus taking the scriptures and proving that he was Jesus. Jesus preaching on Jesus. Can you imagine? Uh, uh, I, I'm here to tell you, if I'm sitting there, my jaw's hanging open. I'm just sitting there in awe. Because never a man spoke like Jesus spoke. Uh, can I say Jesus never misspoke? Mm. And he began to preach unto them Christ. And even though they heard the preaching of Jesus, they were still not persuaded he was Christ. Because even when they enter the house, they don't know who he is. Hmm. How many people hear preaching from the Lord through the man of God, but yet they don't know Christ? Amen. There were people in our midst this morning that heard the preaching of the gospel, but yet they didn't, still didn't believe on Christ. There may be some of you here tonight. You've heard preaching, and you've heard preaching, and you've heard preaching. And it's a term called gospel hardened. You've heard it so much it no longer impacts you. And there are people that have heard the preaching of Jesus, but yet still not persuaded that he's Christ. 
Brother Rob, there are folks that hear about how faithful he is. They hear about how wonderful he is. They hear about how he cares for us and that he is a, a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. But as soon as a little adversity hits their life, all their faith in Christ is gone. They're worried, scared to death, or our nerves are all tore up and everything. Now listen, I understand somebody that's never heard the gospel, somebody that's never had that blessed hope presented to them. I can understand something troubling hits them, their nerves are tore up. But us that are of the household of faith, that have heard preaching all of our lives, that have heard how wonderful Jesus is, Lord have mercy when trouble comes. We need to roll it over on Him, trust in Him. But there are so many people. Amen. Their whole world is shattered, Miss Jackie, because they really don't have faith in Him. Amen. Hmm? Some of you have gotten upset over the years when Miss Annette or myself have went through some things and you didn't find out about it till it was over. Well, preacher, we would have liked to pray for you. We would have, we'd have, we would have been there for you. We'd have done... But can I say this? Long before we'd ever talk to you about it, we talked to him about it. But as your pastor, how in the world can I lead you to him if I fall apart every time something comes my way? Hmm? I'm, to, I'm to be an example for you. That trust in him. You can trust him. Mm, listen, you can trust him a whole lot more than you can the doctor. You can trust him a whole lot more than you can the banker. You can trust him a whole lot more than anybody else, but yet even though they're hearing him preach about him, they don't trust him. And how many people? And boy, I wish, you, I wish you'd get some of the phone calls I get. Hmm? I'm not talking about when the doctor says it's cancer, even though I've had cancer, and guess what? The Lord's bigger than cancer. But can I say, I'm talking about, Miss Sharon, somebody gets a hangnail and their world is destroyed. Huh? Brother Bob, if, if they'd had to go through some things you've had to go through, their world would be destroyed. You know why? Because you don't trust Jesus. Hmm? How can you trust him to take you to heaven and not trust him to take care of you down here? Hmm? They heard us preaching but they still weren't persuaded he was Christ. And then notice that only when he prayed and presented the broken bread was it revealed unto them he was Christ. Verse 30, And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave them, and their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Hmm? Now, listen. I don't understand all that Christ does but if I'm sitting there and he's preached to me and then he gives me a good piece of bread and I realize who he is and poof he's gone that's freaking me out that's what it says he vanished out of their sight didn't say he got up and opened the door and took off he vanished out of, his si out of their sight said where'd he go he went to meet them other disciples in Galilee that's where he went huh he went to do the king's business. That's what he did. Uh, he was there on the king's business. Uh, but isn't it wonderful that the Lord is so great uh, that even after he's preached to them, uh, even after they're not persuaded, uh, he still uh, is working. He's still concerned. He still does what it takes. Uh, 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 and when he prays uh, and breaks the bread, uh, hey, uh, can you imagine not only his preaching, but can you imagine when he's talking to the Father and blessing the bread? Uh, there ain't anybody that's ever preached like him. Uh, there's never anybody that's prayed like him. Uh, and when he prayed uh, and he blessed the bread uh, and he broke the bread uh, and he gave it to them, uh, finally it clicked. Uh, they realized who he was. Uh, aren't you glad uh, he knew what it was going to take uh, for it to click in your heart uh, for you to finally believe on him? Hey, it might have been preaching. It might have been the prayer of a saint. It might have been somebody being kind to you and telling you, talking about the Lord. But I'm telling you, the Lord knew at the right time what to do in your life for it to click and you put your faith in Him. And what a blessing when all things were finally revealed to you. He's the Christ. And then he vanished. 
and went on down the road to help somebody else. I'm interested in verse 29. It's kind of an obscure verse in all this, but I'm interested in this verse. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent, and he went in to tarry with them. Now, before I get to the thought, it occurred to me when I was reading this a minute ago, they're wanting him to come in because they said it's the evening's far spent. But after he reveals himself to them, and they believe on him, they run back to Jerusalem. I mean, it was too dark for the Lord to go on, but it wasn't too dark for them to get back to Jerusalem. Uh, another six and a half miles, uh, they run and tell the disciples, it's real, it's real, he's alive. What a blessing, huh? But I ain't preaching on that. I'm interested in this verse. But they constrained him, abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. And here it is. And he went in to tarry with them. I want to preach on this thought. I want to preach on get in before the day is gone. Get in before the day is gone. Can I say the day is far spent? You better get in on it. Mm, time's fleeting by. Can I say, yeah, I believe we're getting right up close to the midnight hour in Matthew 25 when the bridegroom comes back. I believe as we preach this morning, he's coming back quickly. Uh, I believe we're not only in the last days, I believe we're in the last minutes of the last days. Uh, we may be in the last seconds of the last minute of the last days. Uh, look, uh, the Apostle Paul was looking for him to come back in his day. Uh, every generation since has been looking for him to come back. Uh, but nothing has been set in order like it is today. Uh, he really could come back. Uh, and friend, you better get in on it before the day's gone. Uh, uh, listen, uh, we we ought to uh, uh, put all we got into serving God and living for God because uh, this thing's about to wind up. Uh, the night time coming when no man can work. Uh, you better get in while you can because the day's about gone. Can I say, uh, uh, if you're not saved, you better get in on salvation. Amen. Uh, you better make sure that you know that you know that you know you've been born again. Uh, 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 if you say, I hope I've been born again, that's not good enough. You better know that you've been born again. Uh, hey, they knew a lot about Christ, but they didn't know Christ. Uh, but thanks be unto God, by the time we got down there uh, and he broke the bread, uh, they realized who he was and they got to know Christ. Uh, uh, friend, if you're here tonight uh, and you've never gotten in on salvation, you better get in before the day's gone. Uh, hey, today's the day of salvation. And you ought to get in even tonight. Uh, you better get in before the day's gone. Can I say this? You better get in on service before the day's gone. Yeah. Have people say, boy, I sure would like to serve the Lord. What are you waiting on? You better get in before the day's gone. huh? Can I say some things about service? We ought to serve Him gladly. For what He done for us, it ought to be a joy in our heart to do anything for Him. Hmm? We ought to serve Him gladly. Go to serve him with gladness. Uh, 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 we ought not drag in to serve him. Well, I got to go on visitation tomorrow night. Pass out some tracks. Going to be hot. Can I say it's not near as hot as it's going to be in hell? You might leave a track on the very door that somebody needs to read and trust in Christ. It might keep them from dying and going to hell. I ought to serve him gladly, huh? There's so many people, well, preacher, if nobody else will do it, I'll do it. Huh? You ought to run to do it. All he did was die for you, shed his blood for you, made sure somebody come by and told you about him. When you called on him, he saved you, gave you eternal life, gave you the hope of glory. You ought to serve him gladly. Can I say this? You ought to serve him generously. Hmm? Can I say the Bible says God loveth a cheerful giver? You know what God don't love? A stingy giver. A stingy servant. You ought to serve him generously. Amen. Can I say that God gave the best he had for you? Yeah. Uh, that song Miss Brittany sings about uh, Mary in that alabaster box. Do you realize that alabaster box was about a year's wages? Amen. Hmm? You ought to be generous in serving the Lord. Hmm? Listen, all you're doing is storing up treasure in heaven. Hmm? Yeah. All you're doing is investing in heavenly things. Putting your treasures where the moth uh, doesn't eat and rust doesn't corrupt. I mean, you ought to, you ought to serve him generously. 
Uh, boy, uh, God's been good to us. We ought to be good back to him, huh? You ought to serve him with gumption. That means with drive, with courage, with boldness. You ought to serve him before the day's gone. You better get in on it. Hmm? Uh, listen, two things I know. Number one, you'll never do enough for him. And number two, 100 years from now, everything you've done in this world, it won't matter. The only thing that's going to matter is what you've done for Jesus Christ. Hmm? You ought to serve him. You ought to get in on it. Hmm? I said, sir, she say, preacher, I can't do much. Well, do what you can. Hmm? Do what you can. You ought to get in on service before the day is gone. Can I say this? You ought to get in on the shower before it's gone. What are you talking about? I'm about talking about showers a blessing. You ought to get in on it. Hmm? Listen, y'all are drying up on me tonight. Should have never told you that Aaron wanted me to drag it out. <laughs> you don't know I got another 14 points. <laughs> Brother Clint, if you're sitting here minding your own business and nothing seems like it's happening, but there's another section in the church where it seems like God's a blessing, they're excited, they're getting in on it, I'd gather up my junk and I'd go get in where they're at, huh? I'd get in on the showers. Uh, how many of you love the weather, man? They lie all the time. By 4 o'clock, it's going to rain. 4 o'clock comes and there ain't a cloud in the sky. But you know they'll say, we're the most accurate weather in 12 years running. But see... If it rains somewhere up in Michigan right. at 4 o'clock, they'll say, well, we were right. It rained at 4 o'clock. Not in Florence, it didn't. Uh, but listen, we need to rain. I went outside today for about two seconds. It was hot. Put my feet on the grass, and it was dry. It was about ready to get burnt up. We need some rain. And they're not calling for any rain this week. But I want to tell you something. Uh, if you need some rain, uh, and you need some spiritual rain, uh, and it's not raining down there in Jonesville, uh, but it's a raining over there in Alexandria, hey, you ought to go over there and get in on a shower. Uh, you need some help. You need some rain. Without rain, you're going to get dry. Uh, without rain, you're going to get cracked. Uh, without rain, uh, you're not going to produce any fruit. Uh, you ought to get in on the shower. Uh, when God gets to pouring it out somewhere, just get in on it. Uh, me and my preacher friends talk all the time. Uh, we don't care where God sends revival. Uh, we just want to get in on it when he sends it. Uh, I get word uh, that it's breaking out somewhere else. Uh, I can get away. I'll go in and get in on it. Uh, I just want to get in on the shower before the day's gone. Uh, some of you need to get in before it's gone. Uh, I've thought about this. You ought to get in on the shower of God's grace. Thanks be unto God uh, for His grace. Uh, I don't know about you, but I never get enough grace. I need some of His grace. I need His help. I need His touch. You ought to get in on that. You ought to get in on His goodness. Thanks be unto God. He's been good to me. Hey, He's been good to you. And you ought to get in on it. Realize how good God's been. You ought to get in on the goodness of God before the day is gone. You ought to get in on His glory. Nothing like His glory. Uh, I like it when He shows up. I want to get in on His glory. Uh, some of you look like you don't want too much glory. I ain't never had enough of it. There's something about when He not only gets in the cup, but He starts flowing out. Are you listening? I want to get under the spout where the glory comes out. huh? You ought to get in on it or the day's gone. huh? Get in on the shower. Get in on service. Get in on salvation. Can I say this? You ought to get in on standing before the day has gone. Get in on it. Hmm? One man once said, if, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Can I say there's not a whole lot of people standing today for the things of God. Hmm? You know, people look at us like we're crazy. And some of the stands we make, what our church stands for. You have service three times a week? Yeah. How come? 
Well, because everybody works or else we'd have it four, five, or six times a week, huh? Uh, I can't get enough of him. But our stand on the scriptures and our stand on what thus saith the Lord, a lot of people don't like it. Hmm? Brother Bob, people want a religion of convenience. Something that makes them feel good about themselves where they never feel guilty about anything. But one thing I've learned about preaching, it convicts. The Word of God sharpen any two-edged sword. It'll cut. And people don't like that. They don't like it. They don't like to hear Biden stole the election. Uh, if I get on politics, people get mad. You know? If I get on, on anything, if I get on dress, or if I get on speech, or if I get on your walk, if I get on anything, people, somebody's going to get mad. You know? So I've just figured, well, I might as well make them good and mad. You know what I'm saying? Huh? People don't like preaching. They don't like you making a stand. Everybody wants you to be Joe Osteen. You flip and flop and don't ever get stuck on anything. Hmm? Uh, where nothing can be tacked to you. Hmm? Just agree with everybody. Because something good's going to happen to you today. Just like the weatherman. It's going to rain somewhere today. Just not where you're at. Hmm? Listen. You ought to stand for something. You ought to be counted for something. You know, Jesus made it clear. He said, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? And I say, across this globe, there's not many people standing on the truth anymore. Hmm? You folks that came from Southern Baptist churches or, or churches that are part of a denominational uh, ring, you've learned people quit standing in those churches. And they all say this, when well, order to win the young people, we've got to lessen up. We've got to quit doing it the old ways, and we've got to do some newfangled way and get a rock band and get all these new things, but it'll get to young people. But you know what? It doesn't get to young people. Huh? And it makes a mockery of the things of God. You know what? Watch our young people around here. They still kind of like old preaching. Can I say this about young people? And I'm no child psychologist, but I've been around children for a long time now. You know what children want? They want to know what the rules are. And as long as they know what the rules are, they know where they can stand and where they can live and where they can abide. Uh, uh, listen, you don't need to be a tyrant as a parent, but you need to set some ground rules and stick to them. When you don't follow the rules, that's confusion. And you're confusing your children. You know what children like? They like knowing what the rules are. They like knowing there's a stand. They, know, they like knowing there's a God worth serving, and this is what God said, and this is what we expect you to live like because this is what God said. And they like that when you stand by. You know why a lot of children love me? Because I don't waver. You know why some of the children don't respect their parents in this world? Because the parents are wavering all the time. Have any of you ever heard this? Johnny, if you don't straighten up. One, two, three. I, I don't know about it. In my day, we didn't have one, two, three. We had to do this. You didn't do it. It was whap. Uh, you know one thing I hated as a kid? You know, my mother, my Aunt Lynn's here. She'll tell you, my mother loved me so much she, she hated the thought of spanking me, didn't she? Because I could do no wrong in my mom's eyes, except with my mouth. You know, I had a mouth. Yeah, me. Can you believe that? And one thing my mom would do, and I hated this, if I'd mouth off, which was most likely to happen at some point, she'd tell me, go stick my nose in the corner. I hated that. I hated having to sit there with my nose in the corner. You ever do that to your kids? Try it. Huh? I hated it. I hated it. I'll never forget Jordan did something one time. And we told him to go put his nose in the corner. He sat there and cracked up. He thought that was the dumbest thing he ever heard of. He just sat there with his nose in the corner cracking up. I thought, well, that ain't working. Uh, he did. He cracked up. You know, it's hard to be rough on a kid when he's laughing at you. But you know what's wrong with some of you children? Or some of you parents, you waver. Your children just want to know the rules. And when they're acting out, they need to know the rules are the rules. Hmm? 
I promise you one thing. I don't know much, but I got a feeling, I don't know about Brother Charlie, but I know when Miss Sharon puts her foot down, them kids snap to attention. Because they know Mama ain't going to waver. She scares me. <laughs> huh? There have been times they kind of acted up. Miss Nett's got a big heart, and she, she'd want to show some compassion. And Sharon said, oh, no, you don't show them no compassion. They broke the rules. This is the rule. I'm thinking, Lord, have mercy. I'm following Miss Sharon. She's something, huh? How come I didn't point you out, parent, being that way? Hmm? I mean, you all done checked out on me. I might as well meddle for a while. Hmm? Listen, we ought to make a stand. But in order to make a proper stand, you're not to be arrogant, you're to be humble. Hmm? Uh, but for the grace of God, there goeth I. And the reason we need to make a stand is humbly we know the consequences for people that don't put their faith in Christ. God to humble us that God allowed us to trust in Him. But in order to make a stand, you've got to have a humble attitude. Not only must you be humble, you must honor the Lord in your stand. Can I say there are a lot of preachers, a lot of Pharisees that make stands, but they're not biblical. They're not honoring the Lord. Huh? There's a lot of things preachers get up and preach all over the country, but they can't give you chapter and verse on it. And people amen, people shout, people run the aisles, but it ain't biblical. You're not honoring the Lord. You're being ignorant, and you're leading people astray. Hmm? When you make a stand, you need to honor the Lord. You need to be humble, but you also ought to be holy before the Lord. In other words, blameless. I've seen preachers get up and preach not to do something, only to later find out they're guilty of doing it. Hmm? Uh, if you're going to make a stand, you've got to make sure that your, your closet's been cleaned out. There aren't any skeletons in there. Uh, there's nothing worse than and Paul said, lest I preach to others and I myself become a castaway. You're going to make a stand. You need to honor the Lord. But I'd highly recommend get, on make it, get in on making a stand before the day is gone. The Lord's coming back looking for people standing for the right. He's coming back looking for a church without spot without wrinkle. Well, let me give the last point. Yes, I said the last point. Hold your applause. You better get in on it before the day's gone. You better get in on supping before the day's gone. Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. The Lord's standing at people's hearts' doors, and he's knocking. He said, if any man will hear my voice and open the door, he'll come in and sup with him. Now think about that. Now, when I first started reading that, that I just thought he'd come in and dine with you. But that's not what that means. That supping is an old term. That supping... We probably have to go back to the Ed's days when they were young. Y'all remember when folks would pour the coffee into the cup and let it cool and then pour it in the saucer and they drink from the saucer? Huh? You remember that? All right, Brother Ed, we got to go back a few years. Well, they'd do that. They'd pour it in the saucer and drink from the saucer. But can I say, supping is when one's drinking from one side of the saucer and the other's drinking on the other side of the saucer. And the Lord says that if you open up your heart's door, He'll come in and sup with you. Uh, what's that mean? That means He'll fill your cup up, uh, let it run over into the saucer. Uh, you can drink from the saucer, uh, and while you're drinking on one side, He's drinking on the other side. Uh, can I say, uh, in order to sup with Him, you've got to access the opportunity. Uh, he is standing at the door knocking. Uh, he's longing for somebody that wants to sup with Him. Uh, hey, there are some that will come to church. Uh, there are some that will even come to the altar. Uh, he wants something even more intimate than that. Uh, he wants to get down real personal uh, where it's you and Him uh, in fellowship like you've never known. Uh, uh, you have that opportunity opportunity even tonight uh, uh, to access him uh, and sup with him uh, 
You better get in on it before the day's gone. Uh, while he's a knocking, let him in uh, and sup with him. Uh, hey, when you're supping with him, uh, you get to adore the Savior. Uh, it's just you and him, uh, and you can truly worship. Uh, hey, uh, it's kind of like uh, uh, Brother Derek when you and Miss Jessie uh, just started uh, 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 dating and just started having a thing one for another. Uh, she was your whole world. Uh, you couldn't wait to see her. Uh, you couldn't wait to look in them pretty eyes. Uh, you couldn't wait to hold her hand. Uh, you was hoping she'd even smooch you. Uh, yeah, you remember them days uh, when your heart would beat out of your chest just thinking you got to go see her? Uh, but now all these years, uh, God's blessed you with all these youngins uh, and uh, 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 you're busy in work she's busy just finishing up school and life's come and life's gone and you've kind of lost uh, them googly eyes uh, every now and then you get to go out on a date and remember what it's like uh, and you're still remembering her back then and she's remembering you back then before you was a wimp you know when you had them muscles and everything uh, hey uh, hey uh, sometimes uh, we've been saved so long uh, and we've enjoyed the goodness of so long uh, and we've got to where we can go through the motions uh, and life has come and pressures has come and trials has come uh, but the Lord uh, he wants to sup with us uh, he misses that intimacy uh, he said in Jeremiah I remember thine espousals uh, when thou wentest after me uh, in a land that was not sown uh, guy, he said I remember Israel when we was honeymooning uh, and you couldn't get enough of me uh, and the Lord Lord, uh, remembers you remember when you first got saved uh, and all you knew was the love of God uh, and you couldn't wait to get to church uh, and you didn't know how the song went but you couldn't wait to sing the song uh, hey you couldn't wait to hear preaching it was all new uh, hey uh, the Lord remembers you that way uh, and he misses that uh, and he says why don't you just pull up a chair uh, and let's sup a little while uh, and you get back to adoring the Lord uh, and falling in love with him again better get in on the supping before the day's gone and can I say you better get in on absorbing time with him while you can mm. listen some of those precious times you'll ever have in your Christian life is not when the church bell's ringing, not when the choir's singing, not when the preacher's flinging it down, but it's those intimate times when the Lord reveals unto you how much He really cares for you. That'll help you down the road, friend. You better get in on it before it's gone. The day is fleeing. The Lord's come by your way. The Lord's preached to you. The Lord's done some things for you. And the day's about gone. The best thing that those two fellows did is they invited him in before the day was gone. Why don't you invite him in? Say, Preacher, I'm saved. Hallelujah. When's the last time you just supped with him? When's the last time you served him with gladness? When was the last time you made a stand for him? When was the last time it was fresh? Listen, it's a blessing to be saved. It's a greater blessing when that's fresh in your heart and in your life. The Lord's come by your way today. Have you invited him in? Is he knocking right now? Saying, I sure do miss you. Would you like to spend a little time with me? Will you open up your heart to him and say, Lord, all that I have is thine because it all came from your hand. Will you spend some time with him? Will you love on him a little bit? She sang the words of that song morning by morning. I felt his hand in mine. How long has it been since you really felt his hand in yours? You better get in on it before the day's gone. We don't know what a day brings forth. But we do know right now we have that privilege. Will you let him in? Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. You better get in on it. Has God spoke to your heart about something? Something that's lacking in your life? You better get in on it before the day's gone.
God speaking to you? Has it been a while since it's been fresh? Is there something specific he's, spent, he's spoken to you about that you need to get in on? Something in service or something in, his, in, in your life that he's interested in? If God's speaking to your heart, you mind the Lord. They're picking out a song. Some are already praying. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you again for the scriptures. Lord, it might have been a while since the scriptures burned in our heart. Lord, help us. Oh, you might be knocking on heart's doors. God, help people to let you in. God, there may even be somebody here tonight unsaved, lost without the Lord. You've been speaking to them. Lord, I pray tonight they just let you in. They trust in the Lord. God, just speak in this invitation. Help people to be obedient. Give, help them to give you the glory for their life. And God, have your will and way in this invitation now. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.